How's it going? How is everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's Sunday. So back to work tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, we can never seem to be fast enough, right? Uh, been rainy all weekend uh, due to Hurricane, uh, whatever the hell it name it was, uh, was it Helena or something like that. So we didn't get hit real bad here in my uh, in my area of Ohio. I know there are some parts of Ohio that actually had quite a bit of damage and some some flooding. I know farther south, uh, especially like Tennessee, yeah, Tennessee, Georgia, stuff like that. They they devastated by this. So prayers to to everybody down there. Um, nothing you can do about it, you know, other than heed warnings. Uh, when they say, uh, you know, that's had your way, like I, I did, you know, I kind of kept my eye to the windows and, you know, so if it, if it brewed up like a storm or, or the winds got outrageous, I could at least be aware of it. Well, like I said, I, I didn't sustain any damage here. Um, it's been raining, but it hasn't been like a real hard rain. Uh, so not too bad. But, last night I actually went to a concert at the Rose Music Center in Schuber Heights, Ohio. If you've never been to the Rose, uh, and, and you're in uh, the reasonable driving distance of Rose, uh, keep your eye on, look, look uh, you know, Google it. Um, set up notifications from their website, so you'll be aware when they, uh, when they book shows there. And uh, they have a lot of good shows at the Rose. One of these years I'd love to, either if I had the money to do it myself, or if I had like three people that wanted to all pitch in and do it, and just buy one of those little like four seat like box suites. I know it's like I think it's like you know, thousands of dollars to get it for the season, but I think it'd be worth it because you know from where I live, the rows it, it's close enough to where I could literally leave like a half hour, you know, forty minutes. Um, before the show is supposed to actually start and still get there and it's all you know other than the shows where they have like an open area down at the front which they did for this concert like a pit area the rest of it's all all reserved seating so I mean you got your ticket you know your seat you know you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and then you know after it's over they do I think they do a really I've never had any issues with getting out of the parking lot it's never taken a large amount of time. I mean, you know, some concerts you go to, especially at really big venues, you know, if you don't start making your way for the door, you know, like during the encore of the band, if you get out there when everybody else is trying to leave, you're going to sit in a parking lot for another half hour, uh, maybe longer. So at the roads, it's really easy to get out. I'm on my way, and I'm, I'm back home within, a, you know, like 20 minutes uh, after leaving, you know. 30 to 40 minutes when I'm going there just because I like to get there just a little bit early so I can, you know, hit the restroom, maybe get a drink, uh, you know, a snack or something. Uh, although I have to admit, I have to admit, I think it's probably because it was the last concert, maybe the last show of the year or whatever, but I, I got a Mountain Dew. I decided, you know what, I'm not going to get a drink. I'm going to save a little bit of money. Uh, I got a Mountain Dew, and I didn't really drink much of it. It tasted, it just tasted a little off. It tasted almost like flat. So, but other than that, no complaints to the Rose. I've been to a lot of shows there. The show I went to last night was, the opener was Possessed. And then we had the Almighty Creator. And then we had uh, the almost, I want to say almost Immortal because they, they've been around so long. And, uh, well, I mean, all these bands, all three of the bands have been around for, you know, since, since the early 80s. Uh, but, yeah, Testament. Uh, you know, Chuck Billy, Oskolnik, uh, you know, probably, probably when it comes to like thrash, uh, you know, uh, thrash bands, uh, when you're talking guitarists and like the front men singers, you know, if, if, if you mention the name Chuck Billy or Alex Skolnick, you know, most people that listen to that music, uh, even some people that maybe don't listen to that music have heard those names. Um, but you know, the whole band's incredible. Uh, been a while since I've seen Testament. 
and I was not disappointed. But the whole concert was just freaking amazing. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Testament has been listed for. Uh, they're going to be playing at Sonic Temple in May. I got my four-day passes for that. Uh, I'm really going to try to go all four days, but you know, as I get older, I'm starting to realize, you know what? I'm not necessarily cut out for doing like four-day festivals anymore. Especially because since I have the dog here, and I don't want to board her, and I don't have the extra money to just like get a hotel or something and stay over there, you know, I drive back and forth. You know, you know, my dog's my family. You know, that, that's who I'm here with all the time, and I just, I just feel iffy about boarding, boarding her. You know, I've I've heard horror stories of people boarding their dogs, and then when they come back, even if it's just for a few days, they come back. You know, something different about the dog or the dog's got an injury or something you know, I don't want to risk that so I'll just drive back and forth uh, it'll be worth it you know and the great thing is if you get in early when when if you sign up and, and you're in the know and you get into like the pre-sale pricing when they, as soon as they go up for sale I think I paid with fees and, and tax and everything it was like $347 uh, for a four-day stadium general mission. I like to get stadium. That way I can sit up in the stands and actually see the whole stage. You know, a lot of people like the field passes where you can be closer and stuff like that. I myself, I don't like that. You know, maybe in my youth, yeah. You know, like when we used to go to Bogarts for like thrash metal shows, you know, Pantera, Prong, stuff like that. We were right down there trying to get right up in front. That was many, many, many years ago. I'm not cut out for that crap anymore. And I just like, you know, if I'm going to spend the money, I like to be able to take in the whole show. So I like to set up a stance, and I found out. I found this little trick. The way they set up, because it, it, they have the main stage inside the stadium, and then they have three. They have basically a, a, a smaller stage on each side outside the stadium, and then farther down in the other parking lot is the fourth stage. Well, I've realized... That if you go and you get up in, in the, the upper part of the stands, which is a great view for the main stage, and if you sit on the one side, you can literally sit where you're at, watch the main stage, and see the other stage over on this side and hear it just fine. And they have concessions out there. They have restrooms. So you don't need to go anywhere. But yeah, I'm going to try to go all four days. So far, they they've been slowly listing bands as time goes on. They got some, you know. I think it's a really good lineup. I hear a lot of people complaining, but you're always going to have people complaining. There's always complainers out there. Uh, I'm going to have a blast. I know whether I go all four days or whether I just go the two days Metallica's playing. Oh, oh, I said that out loud, didn't I? Yeah, Metallica is playing two nights. They're playing. They're closing out on Friday night, and they're closing out Sunday night. Uh, so it is May 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th, 2025. Tickets are on sale now. So if you want to see Metallica, you can't beat the price. Even at the highest price level, I mean, if you get the two-day pass, which is uh, something they have where you can basically just get get your, your wristband that gets you into the two nights that Metallica is closing the show, you know, even if you pay with with fees and everything, if you're playing close to five hundred bucks, I mean, you could pay that much just going to see just Metallica twice. Depending on what kind of tickets you get, you could pay that much just seeing them once. And, you know, on top of that, you'll get to see like twenty other bands uh, that day. So, Hank playing. Look up, look up Sonic Temple. They have an app you can download too, and you can keep a prize as they list the bands. They put them on the app, so you always be in the know. Um, but anyway, enough about that. It's going to be a longer video just because I'm rambling. Okay? Shout out to Harold Burton. I saw him. That was one person. I, I know there's a few people that I'm friends with on Facebook. Uh, most of them are just basically friends on Facebook. I haven't actually met them in in and around my area in, in person yet. Uh, one of these days, I'll actually get out to one of the local shows, and I'm probably I'm sure I'll see some of these people. But uh, saw Harold Burton, talked to him for a few minutes. And uh, if you don't know Harold Burton, hey, uh, he's 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 a name in the metal scene. I mean, he's been in a number of different bands. 
Uh, most prominently, probably Decay, but he's also been in uh, Erotic Incisions. Uh, oh, who else? Let me let me see if I can. I don't know whether his page lists any. All right, hang on one second. Any other Facebook? Okay, here. Oh crap. Yeah, so Decay, Heinous Killings, Erotic Incisions, The Reaper Hut. Uh, also says Silver Fist. So he is a, a very talented guitarist. Uh, went to school with him. Been friends with him ever since uh, probably really junior high. Um, so he's a cool cat. I'll tell you. Um, you know, nice guy. You know, he's one of those people you're looking at him, you might you might think, I don't know whether he, how approachable a guy is, but he, he's, he's a cool guy. If you ever see him out and about, uh, Say hi to him. He'll talk to anybody. But yeah, so this is a good show. All right, but enough of that. Video's getting long, so we're going to dive into this. I'll probably split this up actually into two videos. But I was looking, I don't have anything ordered. I'm not buying anything right now. You know, money's tight, especially getting into winter, so I'm not going to have as much residual fundage to, to buy cards or Funko Pop boxes or, you know, this or that. But uh, I have a, a crap ton of Funko Pops underneath my desk up here that I kind of put back to hold on to to see what they were going to do. And I figured it was time to pull some of them out, especially some, a lot of the ones that I have multiples of, and, and list some of them. Most of these will be listed in my eBay store. Uh, the one thing I love about eBay is because because of the number of sales I made on eBay now, um, you know, as soon as somebody buys something, and I print out the shipping label, then the funds, are, you know, I print out, well, I print out the shipping label and it marks as though, you know, it's in process. But then as soon as it's scanned at the post office or, or UPS, FedEx, whatever, you know, whatever you know, decide shipping is, normally USPS. As soon as that happens, then the funds are basically deposited in my account and then they're, they're automatically uh, transferred to my, my checking account. So it's nice to have that, you know, automatic as soon as it's shipped. Whereas other selling platforms, you have to wait for the person to get the item, and then you got to wait for them to, you know, rank the item or rate it or whatever you want to call it. And then it can take like three days after you go to transfer the funds. It takes three days to get to your to your account. So one, one thing, I, I, I put eBay a little bit higher than some of the other selling platforms. But I do sell on all of them. You'll find all that information down below. Most of these will be on eBay. Um, if by chance there's one or two of these that I already have listed on eBay, not likely, I don't have a lot of Funko Pops listed on eBay right now, then I'll put them into my Macari or, or whatnot. But we're going to go through, I don't know, let's do... We'll do like five or six of them. I'm going to pull up the Hobby DB app so we can try to scan. I can get an idea of. I mean, Hobby DB is not as reliable as it used to be. It's always a good idea to kind of check back with like eBay sold listings to see what what these things are actually selling for. But Hobby DB can at least give you a rough idea of what they might value wise. Um, so kind of a starting point. So let me pull that up, and we're just going to go through uh, some of these, and I'll show them, and then I'll scan them, and then I'll give you an idea of what I'll probably end up listing it for. And these will all be listed as, like, uh, a buy it now, unless I happen to have one that's, that's got a lot of value, then I'll probably start it sort of as an auction uh, with, with, low, you know, with the starting bid as a low price that I'm comfortable with it selling for, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Um, so spread the word. Uh, again, you'll find the information about it. My name on eBay is CSI Ryman. I'm a big fan of the CSI shows. Um, so tell everybody, you know, everybody, even people that you might not like Funko Pops, spread the word. Tell everybody to get on there. That way, you know, they get more views. And if I'm having auctions, then maybe more people will bid. All right, the first one we've got is the special edition series of Ginshi Shirazu. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. From Tokyo Ghoul um, RE. 
Is that like a... Is that the official name of that show, or is that like a... Like a, a spin-off series of the anime? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch a lot of anime. I know there's probably a lot of animes that I should watch. Well, I'm sure as many pops as they make uh, of animes, they got to be really good. All right, so it looks like this one. All right, this one's coming in on HobbyDB at $17. So if, depending on, again, eBay sold listings, if we go by, let's just go by the HobbyDB, what it says on HobbyDB. So if it's listed at 17 on HobbyDB, I would probably put this at about 14 bucks plus shipping. Um, so altogether, you'd be paying a little more than $17. But most likely, you're not likely to uh, find this out in the wild, if you will. Uh, this came out in, it's like, April of 2022 so yeah, you're probably not likely to find this too often in retail locations so if you buy it online you're, you're most likely going to pay shipping anyhow uh, but yeah all right next we have got stranger things we have the character 001 this does have the 2023 summer convention shared sticker on it so, let's scan this one. Stranger Things. Did did they have another series of Stranger Things coming out, or did they already do the last the last season of that? I don't remember. The last one I remember watching was. Uh, I mean, I think I watched the whole season, but I, the one that stands out to me was the uh, when they were playing uh, the guy, one character was playing Master Puppets up on like top of the trailer or whatever and with all those like bat playing creatures uh, all right estimated value on 001 pop from stranger things is it says 13 to 18 so the shared sticker is coming in at 13 if it was the actual con sticker it would be 18 so 13 Honestly, I'll probably I'll probably list that at ten bucks. Ten bucks. Next, we have got from Wakanda Forever. We have Namor. I bought a few of these uh, when they first came out, um, just because this is the first. As far as I know, this was the first like Namor pop. Um, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But uh, I thought you know Wakanda Forever. If you haven't seen Wakanda Forever. Uh, go check it out. It's a really, really good movie. Uh, I think they did a really good job of kind of paying homage to, uh, to Chadwick Boseman. Um, it was really good. But yeah, I, I bought a couple of these. Obviously, one to have my own collection because I am a big Marvel geek. Um, but then I bought a few, a couple extras um, because I thought it might be one that goes up in value. Uh, probably not, but. Right now it's coming in at 13 bucks. So it, it's pretty much stayed retail. Um, you know, this might be one of those ones that going forward, you know, if, if this character shows up again, which I would imagine probably will, then uh, then these, these pots might go up a little bit then, but I think pops just in general right now, you know, across the board are kind of going down. And what I blame is not so much a lack of interest in the pops or the actual pops themselves. Um, it's just times with times being so tough, you know, with the inflation that we do have, whether you want to admit it or not, there's inflation. And, you know, with prices uh, at just necessities in life. You know your bills in general being higher, like utilities and gas bill, um, putting gas in your car, uh, or if you know you're somebody that's just recently you know gone out to rent rent a place or to try to buy a house, or 
you know, course of interest rates being higher than they were before. All that stuff adds up to where people don't have as much residual cash. So a lot of times you have people that have Funko Pop collections and they have to you know, break down and dive into their personal collection and let go of some of these pops and they, they sell them for a lot less than what they might actually be valued at. And unfortunately all it takes is a couple times of that happening and then it just brings it just brings that pop down just in general and it can be a, almost a cascading effect because then if the price goes down then the next person that goes to try to sell it and they see okay well now you know it's only trending at you know, 25 dollars i need the money i gotta try to, to price it so it'll move and i can i can get some cash out of it so you know they list it for 15 bucks and so forth and so on. Once prices turn around and, you know, what you're paying at the store for groceries and stuff like that, that stuff comes down and people might not be so um, forward about letting go of their pops. Or at least when they do, they'll be willing to hold out to get more of the value out of it. All right. Anyway, here we go. This will be the last one for this video. I know not, not too many shown in this video because I rambled so much at the beginning. But stay tuned for the next video. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. The next video will we'll dive right in. I've got, I want to say, oh, like 15 more of them sitting here. I've still got like 50 of them underneath the desk. Um, not all duplicates. I mean, I've got some that I didn't pull up that you won't see in these two videos. But the rest of them I'll probably hold on to at least, you know. Maybe till spring, and then I'll look at maybe pulling some up in the spring and see what they're going for. But here's the last one for this video. We have Zorro. Who doesn't like Zorro? I mean, I, I, I actually really like the movies with Antonio Banderas. And uh, Anthony Hopkins. I mean, come on. Uh, I think Antonio Banderas is a little underrated as, as an actor, especially in those movies. And, you know, Anthony Hopkins, he's not underrated. I mean, he's just a phenomenal actor. Everything he was in. But here we go. Zorro. All right, yeah. This one, this one must not have been very popular to begin with because it's, I've never seen it going for very much. Uh, I'm not sure why I held on to it. I thought, well, maybe, maybe it will. But... I think it's one of those things too that uh, you know if you don't have something out there to kind of go go with it you know like if there was a new Zora movie coming out then I could see even if this wasn't based on the new property or the new movie new TV show whatever if there was one it might still go up because then people were interested in it but this is one of those you know, they haven't done anything with this character in a long time uh, that I know of. Um, so I, I just think people just aren't really looking for it. But so right now it's turning at 10 bucks. So this will literally be, I'll, I'll list it for like six bucks. Um, you know, the sad, the sad thing is, is that a lot of these pops with the market being down, a lot of these pops, when I look at what I paid for them versus what am I have to sell for them and then ultimately after selling fees and everything what I'm getting there's a lot of them that I might actually take a loss on um, but that's that's part of business uh, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's dealing with that issue there are probably stores out there right now uh, and not so much like your big like Walmart stuff like that but just small like mom and pop stores that are maybe having to move product that are having to sell stuff for, for less than what they they paid for it or they're they're breaking even on it uh, but hmm, it is what it is there we go so that was just like the little intro if i wouldn't have rambled so much at the beginning uh, we could have fit more in this video but i don't want to go too long so if you enjoyed the video Give me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. Comment down below. Uh, what are your thoughts on the, the Funko Pop market? Do you think it'll make a turnaround or not? Do you think maybe Funko Pops are kind of going the way of the dinosaur, if you will? And, or do you think 
Do you think Funko itself, if they would maybe reach out, branch out, and bring in some new properties, um, that that might help them um, get a boost? Uh, that's my personal opinion. I think there, you know, there's a lot of things out there that they could do that, you know, especially a lot of shows that have like cult followings. Um, you know, for like me, like Sliders. I love I love the TV show Sliders. Um, what else? Fringe. I would love to see Fringe Funko Pops. Like a, a, a Funko Pop of Olivia Dunham. Wouldn't that be great? And the great thing is, like the Chase version could be like her alternate alternate world with the red hair. Um, you can pretty much every character in that show, all the main characters, you could have like, if you want to refer to it as like our universe or the or the the, the universe we start out at in that show. Have those be like the common Funko Pops, and then have their alternate counterparts from the other universe as the chase. See, Funko, pay attention. Things like that, I think, could maybe give a boost to Funko. Obviously, you know, just just prices getting better and people being able to afford things better would obviously give a boost to uh, well everything. Uh, but anyway, that's it. As always, look out for yourself and everyone around you so we have a much better chance of staying safe and healthy. Next video, we will dive into the rest of the Punko Pops I have sitting right down here next to me. So, stay tuned for that. See ya.